Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah and welcome to Islamic Authors, uh, the eighth session where I have the immense pleasure of uh, welcoming an old friend, someone I've known for many years actually, Amandla Thomas Johnson. Um, I remember, I think we first met on uh, some sort of random trip uh, with Phosis or something like this, <laughs> and uh, many years ago actually. Um, but uh, the author of uh, a recently, relatively recently published this, I think, I believe it was published last year, uh, sure, yeah, Becoming yeah. Kwame uh, Tori. Um, and uh, a fascinating and actually, you know, um, mercifully sort of like uh, quick read. It's not something which is going to take a huge amount of time, but something which at the same time, uh, I think, uncovers an aspect of an important uh, figure in uh, sort of the, I guess, uh, upheavals of the 1960s. Uh, and before that in the United States who kind of goes global. So in the early on in the book, uh, which you'll introduce in a moment, you talk about him as being a kind of um, one of three Malcolm X, uh, Martin Luther King, and quite, well, at the time he was known as Stokely Carmichael. So um, I it really gives me a great deal of pleasure to uh, introduce you, Amandla, uh, as someone who's also going to, you're a journalist with the Middle East Eye and has have published very widely um, you know, with uh, all sorts of outlets from Al Jazeera to the Telegraph, for that matter. So, um, and, uh, you know, I, I really uh, thought your piece in The Guardian last year about uh, reparations, are reparations due for um, sort of the, uh, on the on the part of uh, the British Empire, or what remains of it, so to speak, um, to those who were enslaved uh, or uh, subjected to the um, Atlantic slave trade. So you yourself, it was something of a personal reflection sure. as well, because you, of course, have heritage from, uh, you know, both slave owners and uh, slaves, uh, as I understand from that piece. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy to sort of uh, go uh, quite widely because this is Islamic at authors. Islamic at, as uh, I'm sure you're aware, is Marshall Hodgson's term for you know, um, the aspects uh, of Islamic society, which aren't strictly uh, to do with the, the religion per se, but have some kind of connection with um, Islam or, or Islamic culture, uh, which is more religious or more specifically religious. And, uh, you know, in that regard, of course, you have your own sort of uh, personal history with Islam and, and becoming a Muslim, I assume, sort of uh, a decade or so ago, but you can correct Two. me. Two decades. <laughs> Two decades ago, my apologies. Um, and uh, I should, yeah, I should have done my, because I've probably known you for about a decade, so yeah. it's been much earlier than that. So, um, so yeah, I mean, inshallah, I, I really look forward to, um, you know, uh, I, this is an area where I have to do a lot more reading and I have much to learn um, in terms of the way in which, um, you know, uh, whether it's questions of race in North America, but but also how that intersects with Pan-Africanism and to a certain extent how it intersects with Islam. And uh, there are interesting sort of snippets of Islam in the text, actually, which I, sure. I hope to ask you about in the course of our sure. discussion. Yeah. But I'd like to give you the opportunity first to perhaps introduce the book. Um, uh, you know, you can take 10 to 15 minutes as much as as much time as you like, really. Shall okay. Fantastic. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, and salam alaikum to everyone who's um, listening. Um, thank you so much for having me, um, Assam. It's a great pleasure um, to be here um, and to be one of one of a number of um, august uh, guests on your on, on, on your program. Um, so so yeah. So so becoming Kwame Ture, um, it's basically uh, I'm trying to basically recapture this figure, Stokely Carmichael, um, who seems to sort of leave the historical record. Um, from the end of the 1960s. So just to give you a sort of a rundown on who he is and where he came from. So Stokely Carmichael, as he's known at, the, at this point in time, was born in Trinidad, um, the island of Trinidad in the Caribbean um, in 1941. Um, and at a young age, he moves to the US. Um, he moves to, he moves to, uh, to New York um, and it's the 1960s, basically. It's the 1950s um, and we're sort of seeing the beginnings of the civil rights um, sort of movement. And by the time he's 19, he enrolls at Howard University um, which is one of the historically black um, colleges and universities in America. It's quite quite famous. People talk about it now. Kamala Harris, you know, gone there, and other sort of important sort of figures. Um, and really, this is the early 1960s, and the civil rights movement is now in full flow. Um, he gets involved with a, with a, a group called the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, right. and this really is a, a bunch of students um, who are allied, um, you know, with 
Dr. Martin Luther King in the South trying to break racial segregation um, by, you know, boarding buses, um, entering um, whites only restaurants, doing everything they can, basically. And 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 for that, they're, they're sort of getting the full, you know, the full force of the, of the law. They're sort of getting police dogs against them. They're getting um, arrested um, and all sorts of stuff. Um, so Stokely Carmichael is involved in this movement um, and he's and he's very much part of the civil rights movement as in a movement which is trying to uh, basically find liberation or, or equality um, through um, the through the laws of the United States, basically. They're, 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 they're basically trying to find equality um, through the laws of the United States. And uh, Carmichael uh, continues to, um, you know, partake in this in this movement. But then uh, there, there comes a point, really, um, where he sort of feels that um, it's not really possible to find liberation um, through the civil rights movement. And what, what I mean by that is that they're kind of two poles of the civil rights movement. Most people will know Martin Luther King, other people know Malcolm X. And Malcolm X, um, is someone who represents um, a more militant approach, basically, where it's sort of... Um, by you know, any means it's, it's, necessary. By any means necessary, it's more militant. It's, it's, it's sort of, um, you know, it, it, it's using... Um, it, it, it's, it's using, uh, if, you know, if possible, violence um, to, achieve, you know, to achieve ends. It doesn't have a stated policy of non-violence. Um, it's also about black self-organisation, building strong black organisations, um, schools organizations and other ways black empowerment that that really is at the focus of it right. and and stokely carmichael drifts over um to a, a more militant approach um until he famously proclaims what is called black power he makes a black power um sort of um, um sort of salute um and this this really um represents a big break in the civil rights movement um but you have a lot of people um who are now younger a younger generation who are sort of tired and impatient and with waiting for the u.s government to sort of give voting rights or give equal rights um, to African Americans. And they basically move over and start to say, well, we need to create our own organizations. We need to start um, creating our own schools. We need to get power for ourselves, black power, basically. Is and he the Stokely one Co who establishes this symbol? Incidentally? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, exactly. So, right. so, 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 so that, that sort of famous um, sort of black power salute is sort of Stokely Carmichael. Um, um, he, he really does that. And, and you know, he's, I mean, he's a teenager. He's mid twenties at the time, really. Right. Um, he's, he's, you know, he's, he's he, yeah, you know, very precocious. And, you know, lots of those people around that time are very, very young, actually. I mean, you know, Martin Luther King, I mean, he's, he, I mean, when, when he's assassinated, he's not even 40 years yet. I mean, he's in his thirties, right. You know, right. Um, and Martin Luther King represents an older generation <laughs> in, <laughs> you know, in that struggle. Right. So <laughs> these are very precocious um, people. It also really reflects the fact lives. that, you know, if you want to confront, uh, you know, the, the life expectancy of young black men, right. I mean, that's also right, exactly. part and parcel of this. Well, yeah, exactly, exactly. You know, um, so, 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 yeah. So this, you know, I think, I think this is, you know, maybe a lesson for us as well that um, a lot of these people achieve so much um, at a very, very young age, um, as well. Um, what's what's interesting about, um, you know, Stokely Carmichael's sort of intellectual development is that he starts to sort of link um, what's going on in the U.S. to struggles abroad, basically. Right. Um, so around this time, the U.S. has gone into Vietnam. You have the beginnings of the Vietnam War. And Sophie Carmichael comes out as a very um, important um, sort of adversary um, against the Vietnam War. Um, he becomes the most important sort of anti-war sort of hero for, um, for a while um, mm -hmm. and, and gets really involved in the anti-Vietnam War movement. Um, and this sort of is, is a sort of a coalition. It's not just sort of black groups, but they're sort of leftist groups, they're sort of other groups. And um, this is, you know, this is sort of 67, 68. This is the heyday of, of right. sort of revolutionary activity sort of right. globally as well. Um, so, 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 you know, so there's also that. And interesting, in, in, in 67, um, you have, um, uh, you know, the Six Day War um, in Palestine. Um, and, and, and this is something that Stokely Carmichael also gets behind as well. Um, right. and, and, and really, um, up until this point in American discourse, there really isn't really much of a sort of a backing or understanding of the Palestinian cause. And it's really the six. It's really the, through the Six Day War, through the efforts of Stokely Carmichael, um, through through others as well, that we start to see a sort of pro-Palestinian politics um, coming into the sort of political discourse um, in the United States. Um, so there's a, there's a big internationalism, um, which is tied to um, this idea that African Americans are oppressed in the U.S. But the same, um, you know, sort of power that is doing that is also you know, responsible for militarism abroad, um, whether that be in Vietnam, whether that be connected to, to Israel, um, you know, America being a sort of a sponsor, you could say, um, right. of, of, of Israel um, right. as well. Um, and I think 
my my book basically um, tries to go a bit further than this narrative around Stokely Carmichael. Because you have, you have this sort of narrative that he's a sort of um, black figure in the United States. Right. And at the end of the decade, around 69, he leaves the United States. He's effectively mm. hounded out of the United States. Um, you know, they're, you know, they're basically hits taken out on various leaders. We, we know, we know about Luther right. King, we know Malcolm X is taken out at some point. Fred Hampton. Um, we, Fred Hampton, you know, the, you know, yeah. the recent, the recent film. Um, and so yeah. many, many, many of the black leaders actually flee. And Stokely Carmichael, he flees to Guinea in West Africa. Right. right? Um, which, which really, which really is, is, you know, in terms of, you, you, you know places that people flee to is you know that you know we talk about algeria quite a lot um and other mm. places we even talk about tanzania but guinea is quite an unusual place really um but guinea mm. guinea at the time is, is a sort of revolutionary um sort of country um that is being uh, run by president Sekutore, um right. and also it, it's also hosting uh, kwame nkrumah who is the former president of ghana at the time um and it's and it's involved in various sort of revolutionary sort of struggles and stokely carmichael basically moves to guinea um and he lives in guinea for the next um, sort of 30 years and right. what I what I found interesting about looking at his life was that there is a, a sort of very sort of like American exceptionalism sort of narrative to his life whereby everything he's done in America is seen as being you know constitutive of his entire life and but yeah. and when he leaves America that's when we don't hear from him anymore it's as though he's just sort of finished and he's and he's sort of dead um, but I I, I I really tried to focus on on the work he was doing in Guinea basically um, mm. and that that involved me traveling to Guinea um, sitting with the likes of the wife of Sekutore, for example, um, mm-hmm. going through his archive, um, looking at some his of the... His family as well. His family as well, yeah. going to the, uh, the former neighbourhoods he lived in, um, and really trying to chart um, um, his, you know, his sort of life. And I think, I think part of this is also to do with the way that stories in Africa um, are sort of seen as sort of marginal, basically. Um, right. once, once someone leaves the sort of the empire and goes to, um, you know, Africa or, you know, maybe it's South America or somewhere with right. the Caribbean, um, that, that aspect of their life is, is kind of seen as being quite marginal. And what I really found really was that from the time Stokely Carmichael arrives in Guinea to the, you know, to the day he dies, he's very, very active. Um, mm-hmm. He's, you know, he's, he's, he's traveling around the world. He's organizing, he's, um, he's, he's organizing, for example, um, a lot on, on, on behalf of the Palestinians. He's meeting with um, you know, PLO leaders. He's, 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 the, the, there's a lively correspondence with Palestinian militants, for example. Mm-hmm. He's also doing a lot of work across Africa, um, across right. the Caribbean um, and the UK as well. Um, and I think that um, what, what's interesting about this period is that there's a sort of decline in, we have, you know, I think the, the 1960s is sort of the, you know, the sort of zenith of revolutionary movements across the world. Mm-hmm. And from the 70s onwards, there's a sort of decline um, you know, some of these movements, you know, d- descend into civil wars. Um, you know, there are all sorts of problems that you know that you know that sort of come assassinations up. Assassinations of heads of state by Western assassinations of heads of state, exactly. That you know, yeah. all sorts of counter, you know, counter, you know, counter coups, Western right. sponsors sometimes, um, yeah. often um, as well. And and what I found interesting is that Stokely Carmichael, despite this, um, continues working to the very end, and he dies in right. 1998. And, and and one of one of the interesting things he says, really, sort of um, in his sort of last days, is that. You know, in in the sort of um, you know struggles for liberation, they're they're going to be um, ups and downs basically. And our job is just to keep on going. Um, you know, th- there'll be good days and there'll be ba- and, and there'll be bad days, and we just have right. to carry on. Yeah. yeah, fascinating. I mean, like there's there's a lot um, which uh, you know makes me think of the leftist traditions, of course. Um, you know, that sure. just final comment about and you you say this towards the end of the book that you know for him it's like. It's the long view. It's not thinking exactly. about oh, you know, have we failed in what we what we've achieved, uh, what we've set out to achieve? No, actually, this is going to take decades to actually pan out, and we yeah. just need to keep working. He's a very principled man as well. Um, but uh, you know, I, I, uh, that last comment you said that we just need to keep going reminded me of like again within the sort of left tradition, Gramsci's remark that we need pessimism of the intellect and optimism of the will. We just need sure. to keep yeah. going, right? I mean, like yeah. we recognize that things are not great and we can we can accept that but we can still push ahead um you know yeah. trying to take the movement forward and i actually you know i i think of that as a an almost sort of islamically legitimate sort of <laughs> way sure, of absolutely. seeing the absolutely. realm of politics you keep on doing what you need to be doing um yeah. regardless of how bad uh, things are it um there's actually a hadith um I can't remember which collection it is, but, you know, an angel is sent to a, a man who's devoted his entire life uh, to worship and devotion to God. And he sent as a test to 
tell that person that all of this uh, time, this entire lifetime that you've spent in worship is worthless before God. It's not going to be rewarded in the slightest. And the response of the man is to say, we're servants of God. Uh, you know, the the term used in Arabic is nice because it, it says, نَحْنُ عِبَادَ Allah," And عِبَادَ uh, ibad, which is the plural of abd, also is related to ibadah, which is worship. Mm, worship. And he said, we're servants of God. All we know is worship or all we are meant to do is worship. And he kept on doing that. And then he was informed that actually this was, you know, a test and you're forgiven. So in a sense, uh, you know, that sort of spirit of it, it's remarkable because you think of, as you say, you think of the generation of Martin Luther King and Malcolm X and, and these people um, and it. You know, somewhere like Kamitori strikes me at, at the earlier stage as being somewhere between those two poles of approach. Sure. He was part of, as you say, the uh, um, new uh, nonviolent um, committee. I forget, yeah. student nonviolent committee. Yeah, SNIP, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah SNIP, yeah. Uh, and, uh, um, you know, so he, and you also mentioned that there was a certain degree of frustration uh, later on that was saying, you know, this approach isn't really working. We need to be a bit more militant in our approach. Um, and, you know, despite that, he actually still continues to live, whereas that generation is dead or killed off, as, as we discussed, yeah, right? exactly, exactly. Uh, and we yeah. forget about him. So I, I just want, I mean, I want to ask you, this might be a bit of a personal question, but your own sort of like, obviously you're um, born and raised in uh, England, um, presumably yeah. in London. Right. Yeah, I mean, you yeah. you basically live in a metropole, um, yeah. which is where you know the the place from where many of uh, our parents' generations or grandparents' generations were colonized. Um, but you yourself actually moved to Senegal for a period, sure. um, you know, for a good period of time, a few years, as I understand. Um, and I, is it fair to say that you wanted to bring those marginal stories back into the narrative? You wanted to go and explore those. And, and yeah. what do you think is the significance of that activity as well for those of us who are living in the metropole, for example? Yeah, sure. I think, I mean, I think, I think as a journalist, I've been a journalist for about eight years now. And I think I've always tried to focus on the marginal stories. Um, and th those stories within my, my work in the UK tended to focus around the war on terror. Um, so, you know, bringing sort of trying to, trying to sort of extricate Muslim stories from the sort of the mess and the haze and the and the confusion of the war on terror um and that 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 really was was a sort of um that was really the reason i went into journalism basically really you know i, I saw i saw the way the muslims were being portrayed i saw the way that um how that also meant that other people of color um were also being portrayed in in, in, a, in a very um sort of det determined um sort of way um and so i i, I basically focused on on trying to bring those marginal stories out. And I think that as, as I've sort of traveled and maybe matured a little bit, um, I found other marginal stories and and and, and some of them um, chime with me in different ways. I, I'm a Muslim, but I'm also, as you, as you mentioned, someone right. um, who is of African Caribbean heritage. Um, so my, my parents were born in the Caribbean, um, right. a place I, I, I go to the Caribbean all the time. I, I, I'm, I'm a national of the Caribbean, Trinidad and Tobago. Um, and um, it, just, it just so happened um, that um, I, I also began to realize um, that um, those stories were also marginal um, and, right. and, and began to look at them. And I think, I think being, being in Senegal was an interesting turning point for me because I was, uh, number one, I was, in, I was in an African country. I was in a majority Muslim country. Um, mm. So there's a, sort of like, there's a sort of double whammy. But I was also in a Francophone country, um, which, is tri which is like a triple whammy because um, <laughs> within, 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 within the sort of um, linguistic spheres, basically, there's, there seems to be an understanding that you know, if this is a, an English speaking country, uh, country um, then we can invest resources in trying to have reporters um, bring mm -hmm. stories from that country. Mm -hmm. so, so, so what I'm trying to say basically is that if, you're, if, you, if, you, if you read The Guardian or The Times, you're probably more likely to see stories about Nigeria, about Ghana, about Sierra Leone, than you are going to find stories about Burkina Faso, about right. Mali, about so Senegal, which are, all, which are all Francophone countries, right? Right. Um, so so I, I just found it really interesting um, you know how how stories are basically lost, or, or, or narratives, or people are effectively lost through all of these various filters. Mm -hmm. We call them filters. Chomsky uses that term for these filters that we right. apply, um, and 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 are sort of marginalised. And and then I came across uh, this story of Kwame Turi, and and and, and what, what was interesting about him was that um, Kwame Turi is is one of the most 
you know, best known people in, I mean, in, you know, in, you know, of the 20th century in America, but we only know him until, until a certain point. And we know, and we know him to the point until he goes to this sort of Netherland, <laughs> this, <laughs> this, you know, this, yeah. this, this Francophone Muslim yeah. majority African country called Guinea. Basically, right. and then we know nothing, and, and then we hear nothing about him whatsoever. Right. Right. Um, so I, 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 so it was all, it was sort of like an extension of of, of my mission to right. sort of um, uncover him, and then obviously it's fascinating because he, he he's from the same place that my parents are from as well. He's from Trinidad and Tobago, where both my parents grew up. Right, of course, um, yeah. as well, as well. Um, yeah. And and even even within the archive, there there, there were little um, there were little sort of in um, you could say uh, indications. Of, of my father, my, so my, my father was a writer and a publisher. And for example, right. I saw some of the books my dad published were, were in Kwame Tori's archive. Um, my, my, my dad's name even appeared on a document in the archive as well. So all these little things, um, sort of, you know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> all the way, all the way in Guinea, um, right. which I found really right. interesting. So, so it, it just sort of, I think, um, the, the tr tr trying to unpick and, 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 to, and to bring out these stories, um, I think that that was a challenge for me. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that, that that that's what really kind of like invigorated me to sort of do it, to, to tell the story about Kwame Ture. And, and, yeah. and long may you continue. Um, I mean, to be honest, I mean, um, uh, this is, you know, a, a major challenge uh, in terms of the way in which our focus is very often dictated by these uh, forces that we're, most of us are unconscious about, uh, unconscious of, so to speak. So, you know, um, all these filters exist which prevent us from accessing information that in some respects you know are mechanisms for perpetuating empire perpetuating systemic injustice sure. um you know over centuries in some cases uh, particularly yeah. in the modern period and um i i think it's it really it behoves us to try and uh, you know gain a sense of them and if we can as as you have uh, in in a way that most of us actually are unable to do because of the kind of choices we've made in our lives, very often our careers, um, and the structure of capitalism as it exists right now, such that, you know, most people graduating from university couldn't, you know, we're from a generation, I think you and I, where we graduated from university, sometimes with a certain um, degree of debt, which might have been more manageable. I don't know if you yeah. were lucky enough to get in, in, to, in on that generation. But then, you know, the next generation, the real pressures will be, oh, I need to get a job so I can start paying the stuff back. Um, exactly. I, I wanted to ask a bit about sort of the, there are lots of, you know, different threads that run through this. And, uh, you know, let's try and unpick uh, as many as we can in the time that we have. But um, I wanted to ask about the sort of Islamic dimension of this to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he's gone to a Muslim majority country. Um, mm -hmm. He's... Uh, this fascinating person who is, you know, you, you have this uh, reflection on the fact that he was ultimately, for a period of his life, supporting someone who was a revolutionary leader who then becomes something of a ruthless dictator as well for a period. Mm. And mm. then, uh, but, you know, he's doing it in a sense, thinking about the long term, you know, what the revolution means, so to speak. And in the same way, he's sort of supporting the PLO and Nasser and things like that, you know, in this pan-African yeah. sense. Mm. Um at the same time, he um, he, he marries uh, a second time, uh, you know, after he divorces from his first wife, he marries again. And then uh, his child from that marriage, he insists uh, or he expresses a desire for him to learn the Quran. Right. Yeah. I mean, like um, this, uh, in a sense, commitment to indigeneity, because his his I s hmm. suspect, you know, I don't know if his wife was originally Muslim, but at least the cu yeah, the is, culture yeah. and the practice yeah. of Guinea. I, yeah. I, I mean, there's no indication anywhere that he himself became Muslim, from what I can tell. It's a, I mean, I think I think it's 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 a, it's a very good question, and um, yeah. I, I actually I, I posed this question actually. I was in I was in the um the the, the uh, I was in the company of of um, Secutore, the, for, the former president of Guinea. I was, I was, I was with his wife, right. um, and I, I posed so people around. And I posed a question, and pe people had different answers. Um, so, so some some people, <laughs> you know, yeah. so some some people insisted that um, yeah. he had fasted for Ramadan and was therefore and you know was therefore a Muslim. Right. Um, some people adamant um, that he wasn't. Right. Um, what um, and then you know that you know the other things as well. For example, um, his funeral service took place in the in the Grand Mosque of Guinea, 
Um, and he's buried. He's he's buried in, on 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 the Muslim side of the cemetery. There's a Christian side. There's a Muslim side. He's buried on the Muslim side. Of the so, <laughs> so, <laughs> the, so right, right, this right. Sort of thing. From from, yeah. from what the, I mean, the, the 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 family said to me that um, he didn't his he son? didn't die. Yeah, his son. His son. Yeah, exactly. His son said to me that as far as he knew, he didn't die um, professing to be um, a Muslim. Right. Um, right, right. But what 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 friends did say to me was that you know. When when uh, Kwame Ture first went to Guinea, he was a uh, you know an adamant um, atheist, and right. by the time he died, he'd moved to to, to being a sort of theist. Right. Um, right. So there was there was there was some some movement um, there it seems, uh, which which yeah. is fascinating. Yeah. Um, and you know when, when you see pictures of him, he's he's sort of dressed in you know sort of traditional Guinean outfit, you know with a you know with a you know with a you know you might say a topi or something, and you know white right. outfit, and you know which which you you know you would sort of um, associate with. Um, yeah. You know, sort of, you know, sort of Muslims from that part of the world. Um, so, so yeah, yeah it's, it's really fascinating. Yes, yeah, so at the same at the same time, one of the things that you sort of point out is he had a kind of principled um, ideology of indigeneity, so to speak. It's like exactly, you have exactly. to belong and you have to cultivate these as a, in a sense, countercurrent to the global hege hegemony of capitalism and exactly you know, the McDonaldization yeah. of the world, right? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, I, I think, I think you're right. I think, I think that he he was very adamant that he was an African person, um, right. and he really tried to ground himself um, right. in in I guess in in Africanness that was that was rooted where he was, which was in Guinea. And and I guess you know being African in Guinea means that you're also Muslim as well. And you, you know the, the, the you know the two you know the two are sort of um, yeah, yeah, they're, yeah. they're not kind of separated. So so it, it was it was interesting that you know I, I feel that sometimes that, that there is sometimes. Um, uh, you know, some people try to pit one against the other. That you know, you cannot right. be right, Muslim right. and uh, and you cannot be African. But you know, right, right. Uh, which 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 is ludicrous because right, you know, sure, uh, sure. you know, you know, Islam Islam is the largest religion you know in Africa, um, right. and followed by by a great by a great number of of you know West African Muslim, uh, West African and um, people. Um, but but he 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 never really saw that um, that sort of distinction, which I which yeah. I found really yeah. interesting. Um, yeah, I mean. Uh, Sorry, forgive me. I'm, I'm no, no, please, no, please, please. I mean, the, w one of the things that I find, um, you know, interesting is the uh, the sort of the layperson uh, when it comes to questions of religion may not uh, historically have been particularly reflective about these sorts of questions in the first place, right? The the niceties that the theologians talk about about oh, you know, you have to believe this, that, and the other in order to constitute proper uh, being a proper believer. Uh, even the theologians actually um, talk about. Um, the way in which um, for the layperson in some instances that can become a little sort of complicated. Um, there's a fascinating hadith um, that uh, Ibn Taymiyyah talks about um, where, you know, uh, a man basically uh, says to his children, look, I've lived such a terrible life. He's on his deathbed. When I die, you know, burn me, uh, you know, cremate me and take my ashes and throw them in, you know, different seas because if God could you know, uh, resurrect me, he would completely sort of like, uh, he would punish me and so on. And, um, you know, the, the conclusion of the hadith is God, of course, can resurrect him, right? And he resurrects yeah. him and said, why did you do that? And he said, because I, I was afraid of you, right? And and then God says, then you're forgiven. So, you know, w one of the things that Ibn Taymiyyah says is that this person has actually commit kufr because he sort of denied God's ability, at least uh, in his utterance, to resurrect him. That's actually mm. explicit disbelief, or the utterance mm. of explicit disbelief. But he's forgiven by God. I mean, those sorts of things, when it comes to the average layperson, they don't think in these theological sort of technicalities, sure. right? Sure. Um, sure. As one theologian, uh, um, Abdul Hakim Murad, once commented, he's saying, God's not going to put anyone in hell because of a technicality right yeah so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so <laughs> in any case i mean these these sorts of things are fascinating and, and complicated because for someone like kami Tori, like i assume there would be that fascinating kind of duality to his identity once he gets to africa and he's like i'm in guinea on yeah. some level i'm culturally muslim i've been yeah, here for yeah, long yeah, enough yeah i, I think and, you're right I, 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 everyone yeah. around him is muslim I right. mean, he he is right. he is really the only right. non-Muslim in his circle when you think about it. Okay, his, right. his wife Miriam Makiba, his, his first wife wasn't Muslim, but right, right. All, all, all of the comrades I've spoken to yeah. um, are basically a, a lot of them are Muslim. I won't say all of them, but a lot of them are sure, Muslim. Sure, Some sure. of them even even converted to Islam um, themselves. Right. Um, so 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 yeah, it's really, it's really fascinating. So yeah. that that kind of brings me to the next sort of line of questions uh, that I 
have, which is the relationship between this kind of Pan-African or sort of, you could say, revolutionary anti-imperial ideology and, Mm. um, you know, religion. So you've actually kind of written about this in some of your um, research uh, on Nigeria, for example, uh, for the Middle East in in an article, which is very interesting. Um, It's been a while Mm. since I read it, so... Imam Zakaki, yeah. I think it was his name. Or? Yeah, 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 yeah. Imam Zaki, Zaki. Oh, yeah. Zaki, Zaki. Sorry, and yeah, um, yeah. and uh, you know what's interesting to me, we can you know stick to Guinea, and and if you want, you can branch out to some of that broader question. Yeah. But for me, you know, because I I wear a few hats. I wear the hat of a theologian sometimes, as well as the hat of a historian, and so on. <laughs> but just you know, as a theologian, um, you know, I I find it interesting that people can find. Uh, faith while being these revolutionary actors, um, you know, sure. in the way that you said some of his comrades actually converted, but you're still describing them as comrades. And I, I yeah. wonder um, mm. whether there would be tensions between their faith and their activism, yeah. whether there would be a reinforcement of one by the other, um, yeah. whether they would think their faith is incidental. If they're converting, presumably it's not incidental um, yeah. to their yeah. identity. Yeah. 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 yeah no, I, th- I think, I think it's a really good question. And Speaking so so speaking to you know there's there's one um, I, I yeah I, yeah I use the word comrade I don't really know I don't really have another word I guess a sure, um, sure. friend or it, it it just seems the most fitting in in, in, right, in the context enough. I guess yeah. um, <laughs> one one one, so one one close comrade of um, of, of what, what words so would they use incidentally um... I guess I guess they would use words like comrade um, okay, I guess so they or, would use or, that you know terms. Yeah. Bro- you know you, you know a brother yeah. um, that's I, I guess that's another one um, that they would right. use. Um, but um, what, what, so, so one of them actually, he's actually a Haitian. Um, he, he's he's born in Haiti, um, educated in the U.S. and found himself in Guinea um, somehow, and he and he converted to Islam. And and I I spoke to him about it. And what he said is that um, for him, Islam represented the highest um, form of justice, basically, right? Um, and so and, and and so he 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 sort of viewed Islam in a sort of in I guess as a sort of political ideal. Um, but yet, but yet, he filled his politics in with a sort of a, revolu- a revolutionary socialist um, sort mm-hmm. of politics, right? right, right? right. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Um, so, 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 I, so, 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 there was an interesting sort of mix in that. Um, for them, it wasn't so much about um, for some of these people, it wasn't so much about having, um, uh, for example, an, an Islamist um, ideology as, as, as right. such. Right, right. Um, you know, when it comes to sort of nation building or state building. Um, they they sort of they sort of saw socialism as 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 as, as literally um, um, the ends of socialism as as somehow being um, uh, you know um, kind of actually um, related society. to Islam in some way. Yeah, exactly. A just yeah. society that is, um, in a sense, not in natural accord with divine justice. In, yeah, in some, yeah, yeah. In in a general sense, in a non sort of like, you know, technical sense, shall we say, non theological yeah, yeah, sense. Yeah, right, right. Exactly. Yeah. In in in, yeah. in in a sort of broad sense, you know, things like so the secretary himself, um, in terms of organizing, you know, Guinea and stuff, he he sort of used Islam as well um, mm-hmm. as. As a as a sort of way to sort of get people to to think beyond the, the various um sort of ethnic identities, for example. Right. Um, so so using it as to sort of say that well, you know, Islam talks about equality. Um, you know, you know, we are you know we are beyond looking looking at this. Let's let you know let's let's organize ourselves on on, on a sort of different footing. Um, right. So yeah, so I, 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 yeah, I would say that it was it it wasn't so much a, a very sort of um, from what I understand um, yeah. a very sort of theological um, yeah. sort of way. Um, yeah. but they saw, but but they saw the broader, um, um, you could say, uh, idea of Islam as being, you know, for equality and and right. you know for justice, um, as being, um, you know, somehow consistent um, with their own beliefs. Yeah, and and I and I think sorry, sorry, so just yeah, please, please, please. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so so to, to just to come in there as well. So you mentioned um, um, Imam Imam Zak Zaki as well. Yeah. Um, um, he's um, he's a he's, he's a Nigerian. Um, he's actually a, he's actually a Shia cleric in in, in Nigeria and and has a right. um, you know a, v- a very powerful following um, in the north of Nigeria. Um, right. And I think that for someone for someone like him, um, what 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 he's sort of said is that look, we need to we need to have an understanding of the world as it is today, mm. right? 
Um, right. And we need to understand power. We need to understand colonialism. We need to understand imperialism. Um, and and some of the tools that he he's used to, un, uh, to understand the world are not necessarily tools that you you might you might dig up in the hadith and the and you know right. and, you know the Quran, right? right. Um, but 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 through that prism, um, he he sort of understood that. Look, you know, um, Nigeria is a country where there's mass corruption. Um, you know, where there's you know there's you know that you know there's a ruling class which is you know which is um, you know pilfering and you know oil, oil revenue is sort of you know disappearing. Um, and all that sort of stuff, um, and so he's using um, these, you could say, th- these sort of methodologies, basically, for him in order to try and achieve what he says is a sort of Islamic end, right? Um, right. So, so there's this, so there's this sort of negotiation um, with um, how do you deal with the world as it is today, um, and maybe borrowing or using um, certain, um, you know, methods of analysis. Yeah, um, in order yeah. to, to, you know, in order to, 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 to really work that out. So, I mean, this is interesting because what they're doing in a sense is, as you say, that they're sort of drawing on contemporary discourse. Uh, yeah. they're, they're looking at, um, you know, what addresses the needs of their communities as they as they see them. But they're drawing on the language of, you know, equality of um in some respects you know these go back to like the french revolution right i mean some sure. of this is very much um drawing on a on a genealogy which is um yeah 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 i mean i i, yeah. I hesitate to say but european on on a certain level right yeah, yeah. but at the but, same but, but, time that in but, using but it I to think, infuse think, yeah but, but i think i think I, I think it's because they understand that the, the structures they're in the nation state um for example imperialism these are these are actually European creations, absolutely, and so yeah, they, yeah. and 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 so and and so, in a way, they're sort of, they, they you know, they, they feel forced to use those yeah, yeah. critiques in order to yeah. un, to undo them, unpick them, or to analyze them. I guess. So uh, this is something which I I spent a, I spend a lot of time thinking about myself. I mean, um, and yeah. I've I've said this in the past um, to my students, um, uh, you know, postgraduate students when I I've taught that. In a sense, um, as long as we live in an international order, by which I mean an order of nation states that is um, underwritten by, you know, American empire, American military might be able to maintain that uh, order as it stands. Um, we're still in a colonial um, period, right? You know, sure. uh, we talk about post-colonialism, but, you know, it's only it's only post in a very limited sense, right? Yeah. It's in the sense that we're no longer physically being occupied, but... Uh, epistemically we're occupied economically Absolutely. you know we're subjugated yeah. militarily everyone's sort of occupied by the united states sometimes quite literally right there's something like 13 yeah. military bases in the uk it's not yeah. an occupation that is not sort of like done with a certain degree of mutual consent in a case yeah. like the uk or much of europe uh, and in parts of the middle east it's probably not done with a great deal of consent but um, I mean, it's interesting that, you know, the Middle East is one of those places which it, it's difficult to continue to occupy because of the uh, what I would argue is a kind of ideological discomfort that mm. results from, uh, you know, long standing Islamic um, sort of commitment. Sure. You know, to what extent are we uh, inevitably drawing on colonial categories because of our circumstances um, we're being sure. forced to? And... Yeah. Uh, you know, then it's sort of it, the difficult question that arises for me is, you know, how <laughs> how authentic? I mean, perhaps the authenticity question is, you know, too um, too much of an obsession for modern Muslims, for example. But mm. how authentic are um, our efforts to resist if they are inevitably co-opting the language of the colonizer? And yeah, it's it's yeah, a tough yeah. one. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a it's a massive question. I mean, this is this is a million dollar question, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so <it's, laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm yeah. I'm not expecting you to answer it, but I don't know yeah, if you I mean, have I, any no, reflections. No, think, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, sure. No, no. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, I think I think I think I I I think it's I think it's a massive massive question, and I think the um the, the I think I think the problem is is that as you described it, there's a sort of bind um, yeah. where. Epistemolog- epistemologically, yeah. um, where we're still we're, we're still using the frames of reference, um, where we're still educated in you know you know in, in you know in in a, in in a similar way, language the language that we use um, forces us to to speak about these things in a certain way, mm-hmm. um, and I think there's I think there's kind of like two things that tends to happen. I think in in one sense like 
you know, some people, and, and, and you saw this in the post-colonial era, or the, you know, sort of independence era, you know, whatever. Right, right. Um, but there's this massive sort of shift to be like, okay, you know, we're now indigenous, we're now, um, you know, we're now bona fide Africans or bona fide right. Muslims or bona fide whatever it is. Right. Um, and, and it becomes a sort of like a very sort of shallow nationalism mm-hmm. where you basically just, you literally just, just paint the, the, the existing categories um, mm. with the stripes of a certain color with, with the stripes of a certain flag mm. um, and then and, and then present them as being as being genuine and authentic um, right, nice. and and this and, and this leads to a very sort of narrow narrow sort of nationalism sometimes right um, when, when in fact you're just you're just reinscribing the same categories that, that you know that are already that, that are sort of already there um, and then and then you have the other extreme where you completely um, embrace um, you know the sort of western paradigms as being and and you just carbon copy them and impose them on 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 your society um as being the the way to modernize you know n- not realizing that this is actually a very european um that these you know this these ways of modernization are actually you know from a very european history actually um no, i mean in a sense modernization. A continuation of colonialism <laughs> exactly absolutely in, in a, a absolutely sense, yeah. absolutely no mm-hmm. absolutely um and i think and i think that the cha- the challenge is to is to find a way out of that, to find a way out of that bind. Um, and to, you know, I, I think I think what's interesting, places like South America, I, I find quite interesting. I've done, I did some work um, in Chile um, with the Mapuche people. And for those of you who don't know, Mapuche people are the sort of indigenous people of Chile, um, but also they live in neighbouring Argentina as well. Um, and I, I, I was there in Chile, in, in Santiago, Chile, um, during Columb- Columbus Day, basically. So many parts of America is Columbus Day, you commemorates the day that Columbus arrives in America in 1492. But for indigenous people, you know, it, it, it's basically, the, the, you know, the beginning of the end, effectively, yeah. right? It's the beginning of their yeah, genocide. Yeah. For others, yeah. it, it, it's a celebration of this. <laughs> of, of this of of that this genocide. Right? <laughs> yeah, right. Effectively, right? <laughs> well, they and, didn't put it like that. <laughs> and and, and, and what, 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 I, what I found really interesting was, was how they were... Um, you know, when it comes to things like um, extractivism, so Chile is 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 a, is, a, is, a, is a country rich in mineral resources and rich in um, you know in you know in sort of timber and stuff like that. Right. And they they were trying to basically sort of say like their, their resistance against that was drawing on their own sort of indigenous sort of kind of cosmologies that no, these rivers and you know this land this forest um, is is bound up with who we are as people. There there, there is no separation between humankind and nature for example um and and and, and their resistance it wasn't it, yes it was it was drawing on sort of you know thinkers like Franz Fanon and etc cetera, etc cetera, you know thinkers that you know anti-colonial thinkers but there, but, there, but there really was a strong component of indigenous kind of cosmology that they were infusing um in in in, in into their resistance and I, I i i found i found that really fascinating um that that, that they that they really put that central um as a way to um, sort of move forward. How, how big yeah. is this um, sort of group, incidentally, the Mapuche people? Um, Mapuche, 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 I mean, they, they, Mapuche. yeah, they, 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 they are they are the largest um, okay. indigenous group in, in in Chile, and 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 in actual fact, um, so tens you might of have millions, known, perhaps. Yeah, I'll I, I would say I'll I say a few million. I'll say a few million, I'll say right. a few million pro- okay. uh, probably, given that Chile's population isn't 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 is massive, but right, right. Um, but you, um, you you might have known that Chile, Chile there, there was some political upheaval recently um, in, right. in in Chile in the last year or so, um, right. and one of one of the demands of the new constitution is to recognise um, Mapuche land, basically um, in Chile. In in, in 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 interesting enough, the Mapuche resisted the Spanish, so they resisted Columbus's legacy. But it was when Chile became an independent country that was when their land started to really disappear. Um, so they, they've they've really been front and centre of 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 trying to basically. Um, refashion um, the nation state or refashion um, you know what it means to be a state in in, in South America and, and the most interesting experiments in what we're sort of talking about are taking place in South America as well um, it's, it's a good place to look look for this you know the Quechua people the Aymara um, South America seems to be an important place for kind of what we're talking and, about I mean um, South America unfortunately is one of those areas where my own knowledge base is very limited it's it's kind of and I think this is quite common for a lot of people based in Europe that you know it, yeah. it's kind of a bit of a no man's land no one goes yeah. that far so to speak and it's really it's it's a matter of great neglect actually on, on sure, sure, researchers sure. like myself um, yeah. but hopefully uh, through knowing <laughs> sort of uh, 
budding scholars like yourself, I, uh, we can yeah. look forward to I think, reading. I mean, I mean, if, yeah. I mean, if I, I mean, I mean, if I, if I could just sort of say, I think, yeah, I think please. there's, you know, as 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 someone from from the New World, so to speak, um, you know, you know, from the Americas, right? You know, you know, the Caribbean is. is I mean, we're, we're we're next door we're next door neighbors with yeah, yeah, with yeah, the United yeah. States, and yeah, and course. and you know, half, half of my family lives in the US, right? So right, right. I, of I, I I I I've I've never really had a sort of um. Um, it's never really been str- the, the Americas have never been strange to me. They they, right. they really have been more right. this the, more the kind of center of my universe right. really. Right. Um, but then I'm Muslim as well, right? So then there's a kind of Eastern portion as well. Um, mm-hmm. But I I I I I really think that um, a lot of the discussions um, the discussion we're having now, um, it's good to pay attention to what's happening in in you know in sort of Latin America because right, right, right. you know when it comes when it comes to you know in, indigeneity when it comes to um, colonialism when it comes to yeah. things like slavery all of all of these things when it comes to um you know all of these things i think i i think in many ways they've had to they, they've had they, they've been dealing with it for, for many right, many right, right. more years right. um that you know they're kind of way ahead actually um, the first, in these things so. they're the first victims of american imperialism right um sure, and, right, exactly. uh, and and have had to dealt, deal with that for a lot longer um, yeah. But actually, you know, some of those uh, key concepts of modernity, the sovereignty of the nation state and so on, I think there's this major sort of like Treaty Montevideo Treaty or something like that, which uh, takes place uh, in South and Central America, or it's through a sort of mutual recognition of the United States and a few states in the South sure. um, uh, that brings about that sort of an understanding of what sovereignty is on the part of a nation right. state. Um yeah, I mean, uh, I think you're very right that we, uh, and and to be fair, that there's already sort of excellent decolonial uh, theorists who are specifically located within that sort of orbit, um, uh, often writing in sort of <clears throat> um, Portuguese or in, in, I think in Spanish as well. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but uh, who comes to mind? Uh, Pa- Paulo Freire, I think, is uh, one of, of, course, one of yeah, these absolutely. Latin American great um, sort of pedagogues. Yeah. Um, but also now you have uh, Walter Mignolo and others. Of course, yeah. Again, yeah, people yeah. who Nelson I've Maldonado dipped Torres. in and out of... Sorry? Yeah, yeah. No, no, Nelson Maldonado Torres uh, comes to mind okay, as well. Okay, And, yeah, and yeah, uh, yeah. people whose work I've occasionally dipped in and out of, but I need to spend... And it's also interesting because you that's where you have, you know, liberation theology coming out of, right? Of course, um, yeah. Uh, which it, which is an interesting sort of, uh, there's interesting work to be done, I think, um, between uh, sort of Sunni theologians, for example, myself sort of working within uh, Sunni theology and liberation theology. I think there's been interesting work done already by Shia theologians looking at liberation theology. Sure. But the same, I don't think, can be said for Sunni theologians. So... Yeah. Um, mm. But I, I wanted to ask, you know, or kind of um, reflect on some of the points that you made, because you're talking about sort of the the way in which a certain narrow nationalism can come about in certain parts of, um, you know, these countries, uh, or the way in which they want to fashion in a, a place like uh, Latin America, um, the Mapuche people, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Hopefully. Sure, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, they're, they're trying to create a kind of indigeneity to their own discourse yeah. um, that allows for a non-Eurocentric um, approach to various questions. Yeah. And I think what, what's, you know, interesting, uh, there are two things that come to mind. One is the, uh, you know, Eurocentrism's claim to universality is how the entire yeah. sort of like system was built, right? So yeah. the way in which those sorts of efforts will... Um, necessarily be sort of like marked out as particularism or as kind of not representing a universal uh, something that is universalizable whereas the european project represents the human being and humanism exactly. right um and yeah, yeah yeah and i think you know those sorts of ideological um outlooks uh, uh, that underpin eurocentrism uh, as a global ideology uh, which is you know eurocentrism you could say is a synonym for whiteness in a sense yeah. Um, but, you know, those sorts of ideological uh, um, claims uh, of, to universality are the things which I think really need to be focused on and highlighted as a particularism, right? That exactly. has managed to sort of colonize the world, but is ultimately a particularism which really does great violence to various other traditions of human beings. But what would you say to the people who would argue, um, you know, 
uh, counter to this that, well, actually, no, you need a universal perspective. Um, otherwise, mm. you're going to be sort of imposing your own particularism on everyone else. Like, what yeah. is the what is the answer that maybe the Mapuche people would give in this sort of a context? Um, I think I mean, I mean, I think I think that, you know, in wherever you're working from, I, I, I think I think the idea is that, as you said, um, this sort of you this idea that, um, you know, Eurocentric universal Eurocentric ideas are somehow just universal. Um, yeah. You know, it's kind of it's, it's kind of you know sleight of hand, isn't it? Um, where, it's very where they just sort of, at least. It's really self-serving, right? Um, and and we've just sort of imbibed it. And I think, I think what's I think what's important though is, with, with, with within these various um, indigenous or it could be religious sort of traditions, they they have their own understandings of how to work alongside other people. You know, it could be it could be the people of the book. You know, the, you know, the, you know, the, you know, these are people who've been, you know, wherever we come from, we've had to live alongside other people. We've had to incorporate um you know various ways of you know incorporate you know various modes of difference right i think right um right. and i think and i think that's, that's that's a really important thing for us to get back to there doesn't necessarily yeah. i think you know in, any sort of universalism is, is very very hard to come by um mm. and i think that it's quite lazy um for us to just sort of say well um we just need universalism to you know right. to incorporate everything i think i think i i think i, I think there are ways to do it um, they don't just, you know, just just lean on this sort of idea of having just this, you know, kind of universalism. And and and, and I think I think that w w within these traditions, that there, there's so there's so many, um, you know, you look at, for example, in the United States, um, you know, the sort of you know Native Indian tribes. I mean, you know, the, you know, these are you know great confederations, weren't right. they? Right? Right, right. You know, you know, you know, right. So they, they you know, yeah, they yeah. they had various ways of managing. Um, all these, you know, you know, all these very, di you know, different languages, um, you know, varying cosmologies within that as well. Right, um, right, right. So I think, I, I, th I, th I think it's really there. Um, inside, I, I, yeah. You know, what you say makes me um, think of the fact that, you know, as the term you use, sleight of hand, this, this mm. claim to universalization is, of course, you know, a mechanism that uh, is about enforcing your view of what is universal on everyone else in a way exactly. that, um, you know, colonial empires did that was a, yeah. a lot less tolerant than the ways in yeah. which, as you say, you know, we're yeah. human beings. We've always had these differences yeah. among us yeah. through throughout exactly. human history. Yeah. We've managed them somehow um, without sort of devastating the planet, without devastating vast sort of ecosystems and devastating yeah. vast populations as well. Yeah. Um, and the pretense of universal, you know, European universalism you know, mm. you, you've done work on prevent, right? I mean, like, yeah, the, of course, you know, yeah. I mean, it's the same. We thing. don't fit that paradigm. In the, yeah, the black yeah. and brown people who are of Muslim Absolutely. Sort of background. But, but I think, but, but I think, I think, I think as well. Yeah, we're 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 so used to being within this paradigm of the nation state, right? right. Where you know you you know you need to have you know there's such a strong narrative around integration, around assimilation, right. around right. prevent, around social engineering, around you know who belongs and who doesn't belong, right? right? Around policing ideas, around policing people, policing mm. certain groups, um, it, it almost becomes it becomes difficult for us to imagine a society where actually that isn't the case. And I think, and you know, I, I, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't want to sort of, you know, sort of fantasize about sort of Muslim history, but I think, I think, I think there were times in Muslim history where um, there wasn't this sort of like top-down need um, to to basically enforce. Um, and to and 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 to basically hammer everyone into in, you know into sort of carbon copies um, mm -hmm. of one another, you know, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. you know, you know, you know, there you know there are various you know there are various moments where, um, you know, I don't know, in, you know, in, in Sicily yeah. or in Spain, yeah. you know, you know, but, you know, Jews, but, you know, throughout yeah. throughout the actually, I mean, I'm not sure it's even particularly exceptional to uh, Muslim history, of course. I mean, this is of course not. Yeah. You know, the emergence of the modern nation state and the emergence of modern policing and the yeah. way in which the monopoly of violence um, kind of was extended to this idea of, um, you know, the monopoly of ideological um, sort of, uh, uh, in a sense, production and uniformity and things like that are all products of the modern era, right? I mean, exactly. Um, historically, uh, states didn't have enough power to enforce that level of uniformity. uniformity. In the Islamic yeah. tradition, the state was kind of a 
you know, um, what someone like Robert Nozick would probably call, the, the political Harvard political theorist would probably call a night watchman state because it was such a small sort of like affair. And, you know, the, the institutions that kept society ticking over were usually, you know, ulama uh, connected to communities that were, you know, ideally reflecting the needs of those communities on a relatively, you know, close basis it's not that there was some distant state over there it didn't have the resources the pre-modern yeah. states didn't have the resources to enforce that kind of uniformity and so um you know i i think it's we're, we're kind of arguing against this shibboleth that has been created by sort of yeah. um the colonial powers that wanted to say you know w which emerged out of you know this uh the great success of capitalism in in sort of like colonizing the global system um which you know the state um through through which kind of created this totalitarian nightmare and i think yeah. you know in a sense liberalism is an interesting sort of like um product of the last few hundred years because one of its raison d'etre of course was to somehow try and limit the state but ironically you know it's something which emerges as part and parcel of a state ideology it doesn't call for the limiting of the state when dealing with undesirables right like whether exactly, it's colonial exactly. yeah, colonial yeah. subjects yeah. or yeah. indeed sort of um you know people who are problematic indigenously or or locally which is something which we've seen a resurgence of uh, since 9 11. yeah yeah so so yeah, yeah, yeah. i mean th there there are these fascinating sort of um disjunctures in in liberal thought that you know just by power of being the norm by power of mm. being in charge, we have to contend with them. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I, I really sort of, yeah, I, I wonder how you can dislodge them from people's minds, right? I mean, because we yeah. all are ultimately yeah. just automatically accepting them, right? People like myself and yourself, we can sit in ivory tower sort of academic settings uh, and yeah. have these kinds of reflections, but, um, you know, they, they are uh, unlikely to have yeah, um, and I think I I, I and I think I, I think I think it's interesting, you know, even even the discourse around the Islamic State. I know, I know, I'm not I'm not talking about ISIS or Dole or anything when yeah, I say yeah, this, yeah. but but, the, but you, you understand what I'm talking about. Absolutely, and how, absolutely. And 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 how and how the, the state the, the the state the Western state effectively is so is so central to that discourse, and right, it is right, and right. And, and, it, and and just I mean it, it just really goes to show sometimes um, how how infused. Um, yeah, those ideas yeah. are in in, yeah. in 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 how we think about the world. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. 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 There, there needs to be work, I think, and you know, in a sense, there is a actual. Uh, uh, there's a debate that's currently ongoing, as far as I can tell, since while Halak wrote his sort of the impossible yeah. state, right, which um, which is a, a book I think uh, that Islamists need to sort of take seriously, to be honest. But this centering of the state, but of the modern state in much Islamist discourse, um, without reflecting on the fact that actually this is kind of alien to what existed in pre-modern times. The state wasn't yeah. terribly central to mm. um, sort of the deliberations of the Muslim community mm. um, or when it was at the early point, uh, you know, the earliest points in the community when the state was actually in a sense um run by relatively pious people who recognized their own fallibility and did not sort of act as totalitarians. Um, mm. It was a different proposition to what is being proposed, I think, by some by some Islamists. I want to say that, though, that there are, you know, Islamism uh, is a very, you know, a wide spectrum of views. And so there are people who, mm. um, you know, will have that anxiety about the nature of the state. And, mm. um, and I hope to write uh, more sort of diligently about them as they go to into the future. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But y you're right. I mean, like this kind of state centrism is very often this uh, unreflective adoption of a very problematic st state structure. Um, yeah. And yeah. so, you know, that that's something that we need to um, be a bit careful about. Mm. Um, I, I, so, uh, you know, I uh, I'm happy to sort of uh, uh, sort of keep the discussion going on on certain other themes that um have come up but we've come to the hour mark sure. and uh so you know i'm uh i'd like to sort of uh, give you the opportunity if you want to add anything further um but uh yeah uh you know please feel free uh
Yeah, and, um, yeah, and we can go much broader than uh, you know just the book. And I had a few other questions about the book, but uh, yeah, inshallah. yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. why don't you um, why don't you ask the questions about the book? Sure, sure, I'm, sure. I'm more happy than yeah. That that, that might be the best way. That's forward. fine. So, yeah. I mean, I, I actually wanted to ask whether this was going to be potentially something which feeds into a, a doctoral project for yourself. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So, so I, I am, I am um, on the verge of pursuing the doctor, doctoral project um, in in um, in the US, inshallah. Inshallah, um, inshallah. Just trying to yeah smooth smooth things over and uh, get the required paperwork, etc. Inshallah, um, inshallah. But um, I, I'm I'm actually interested in looking looking um, looking at literature. Um, as I feel that, um, I feel, you, you know, like, like growing up as a, I, I, I don't want to sound like a contrarian, a contrarian the whole time. <laughs> okay. but, feel free, sort of, whatever's, <laughs> whatever works. But I feel, I feel, I, 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 I feel that when it comes, when it comes to sort of discourse around, um, you know, Islamic studies, Right. um even around like black studies i always feel that i, I sometimes feel the literature gets literally i mean like you know novels poetry and stuff like that right. i feel i feel right. like it kind of gets neglected and i and, I, and I've, I've always felt it to be like such a rich source um of you know you know of thinking um you know when you think about someone like edward saeed or you think about spivak and Stuart hall um these are people who you know drew drew a literature quite a lot right. um so i'm i'm that that's sort of like my plan um I'm I'm particularly interested in in Caribbean literature at the moment, um, and looking um, particularly in the sort of the 1980s. Um, there was in 19 in, in 1979 there was uh, something called the Grenada Revolution, um, mm -hmm. a Caribbean island, very small island. I mean, you could fit the entire population into Wembley Football Stadium, um, <laughs> and <laughs> um, and and had and had this remarkable revolution. Basically, attracted people from all over the world, um, uh, many of them writers. Um, it lasted for a few years, and then the, you know there was a big um, American intervention, um, America's biggest inter intervention, I think, since Vietnam, mm -hmm. um, where they sort of went in there and, and you know sort of ended it. Um, right. And I, I'm I'm just really interested to see what happens when, um, what happens to literature, you know, during the during a sort of revolutionary moment, mm -hmm. um, you know, um, is there you know you know you know is is is, is literature ever you know ever neutral? Um, you know, and, you know, and, and sort of asking right, these sort right. of questions. Right, right. Um, so that, that that's that's sort of the direction um, that I'm sort of heading in. Um, but I but I think but I think that you know th I think those questions are are easily applicable to you know other other places as well. Um, so that's right, the, yeah, right. yeah. I mean, I look forward to I, one of the things that um, one of my supervisors said when I was putting my proposal together. And if you're doing it in the US, you know, you'll be doing this maybe in two or three years' time. Actually, putting your proposal sure. together. Uh, yeah. Before you, before the committee, because you do you end up doing coursework for a couple of years and then, um, you exactly. know, uh, going into the uh, proposal stage, so the doctoral candidacy stage, and yeah. um, uh, you know that supervisor Michael Cook was saying that um, you know at the end of the day, uh, just put something together because it's going to change, <laughs> you know, a couple of years down the line. So, you know, whatever you end up picking, it'll subtly change in certain directions or sometimes somewhat radically. But um, but yeah, I mean, I think, you know, this literature dimension, um, literature has been this vehicle actually for, um, you know, resisting uh, the colonial um, sort of onslaught very often. It's, it's one of those few areas sometimes which um, in which people have found uh, the ability to articulate themselves. Um, and, you know, uh, one knows of in, in Africa in particular, you know, literary figures being executed because of their resistance to totality. I mean, because, you know, dictatorial regimes and so on. So, you know, one assumes that there is a great deal of power to be had through literature. Um, Absolutely. And yeah, uh, yeah inshallah, I, I, I guess. Um, so uh, I, I also wanted to ask you, and this is not directly connected to the Kwame Torre um, sort of sure. piece, but more on your reflections on, I mean, this is something that um, you know, feel free to sort of discuss to whatever extent um, yeah. you feel competent about. But with respect to the slavery um, piece that you wrote, we had sure. a, a brief exchange at the time about yeah, we sort did. of, mm. well, the Islamic tradition actually sort of had a certain practice of slavery for much of its history, right? Um, sure. And yeah. even today, you've done some very poignant pieces about Mauritania, where there's kind of like this underclass um, yeah. that are very often the descendants of slaves, right? Their, their yeah. grandparents were slaves, or sometimes exactly. maybe even their parents. Yeah. Um, and uh, you've seen that firsthand. You yourself have experienced it. And I think 
that perspective is very much missing in the literature, right? Like I, I had the mm. pleasure of inviting uh, the wonderful scholar Jonathan Brown, sort of mm. who've, who's written about slavery. Um, but it's a very theoretical. It, it's very, it's very poignant, and he's he's also self reflexive about his own positionality. And I wonder, sure. like, um, yeah, what your thoughts are on some of these sorts of questions. I mean, you know, it's it's a it's a it's a massive question, but I, I have to tell you, like, it was um, in 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 some ways, you know, I, I I've been quite fortunate as someone who is a descendant of slaves to be able to go to a country and, and speak to people, speak to people who were literally born as slaves, basically. I mean, okay. <laughs> some of those people I spoke to were born as slaves and they had okay. to find their own freedom right. um, and stuff like that. And, and you know, as it, it, it's, it's provided a lot to kind of reflect on um, as well. I think, I think that, you know, as, 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 a, as a Muslim from, has roots in, in, in the new world, you know, mm-hmm. um, if you can call it that, in the, in the Americas, um, yeah. a, you know, place a, a place really that was really sort of um, created through enslavement. I mean, enslavement is is, is is integral to the creation of the new world, right. whether that's in right. the Caribbean, United States, whether that's Brazil. You know, we, we forget about Brazil. Brazil is another place, but also places like Ecuador and Colombia as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I think that and and, and when when you look at um, all of the sort of um, you know, the sort of efforts to, you know, for liberation. Um, you know, when you, when you look at Franz Fanon, when you look at Césaire, when you look at C.L.R. James, when you look at Malcolm X, um, sla- slavery and the legacy of slavery is is so much at the heart of 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 of, of kind of how they're thinking, right. and 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 kind of where they're going with this. And so, my my positionality when it comes to, you know, witnessing or slavery in the Muslim world mm. is going to be very different from a lot of people. Yeah. You yeah. know, it's going to be very, very different because, yeah. be, because, because the language and, and, and the way that um, people of, of African Caribbean, African American descent, African Afro Brazilian descent have mm. been able to assert their very existence has mm. been premised on the destruction and the eradication of slavery and, and its legacies basically. Right. Um, so, so that, that it, it gave me a lot of food for thought because I, I was sort of I felt like, well, I mean, I'm in Mauritania. It, it was interesting in that I, I know a lot of people who've, who've been to Mauritania and you've studied in Mauritania, right? right and, and 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 none and none of them have spoken to me about slavery. None of them spoke to me about about the situation of black people in Mauritania, right? Right. right <laughs> you right, know, right. and then you know some of them have lived there for like several years. Right. So, so. In a way, it was and, a blessing that I, yeah. that I that I was a person that, that kind of went there witnessed it because I I kind of and I, I could I could see things maybe that other people couldn't see, right? Um, while sort of and, being and there. just to clarify, you said the the legacy of black people in uh, Mauritania because what will happen very often is there's a shadism there, right? If you're darker skinned, you're exactly, basically yeah. more likely to have descended from slaves. Whereas yeah, if you're yeah, lighter yeah. skinned, I mean, you were a slave owner. Yeah, so so, so it's, it's interesting, Mauritania. So you, you have you have that sort of shadism that that, that you spoke about, and that mm-hmm. um, you know you know your your your, your color gives you away effectively. But right. but but, then, but but there is also an, another thing as well, Mauritania, which is um, that you you have another group of of of, of black people, in Mauritania, um, who are ethnic groups, which are also you'll also find in Senegal, neighboring country, and also mm-hmm. neighboring Mali, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's been a sort of post-colonial tussle. Um, for hegemony um, between the sort of Arab Arab Berber Mauritanians and these mm-hmm. other Black African groups, right. um, and so, and and so you know race again has sort of been used as a sort of marker, um, mm-hmm. and 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 culture as well. You know you know you know you know you know for example you know Arabic has been enforced um, as a language of instruction right. in schools. You know right. you know you know as opposed to these other other right, languages right, right, as well. Right. So so so, the, so there's also a sort of post colonial. Um, sort of struggle again that is also sort of racializing things in Mauritania, um, right. which which you know which is really interesting. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, um, it was it was quite it was it was it was it was it was, it was quite it was quite remarkable sort of being, um, you know, be, be, be you know being the sort of Western journalist, yeah. you know, who yeah. sort of like um, you know gets you know sort of. Uh, Who's very dark skinned, yeah. right? So you would also resemble. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> right, exactly. So I, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, so, I'm sort of writing for Western publications, um, <laughs> you know. In, in, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm from, I'm from London, from the West, and I'm sort yeah. of in, in Africa, writing about this stuff. But then people are, are talking to me as though I'm one of them, 
you know. Fascinating. <laughs> you Fascinating. know. Uh, and, what language and, and would of, you yeah. be speaking generally? Um, I was like... so yeah. So it was. I, I had a translator with me, so it was sort right, of. Right. It, 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 it was. It was so. It was, it was, so it was often in, in Arabic, actually, or, or, right, or at least, right. the, or at least their, their particular dialect of, of you know, of Arabic, which is, which yeah. is quite, which is quite, 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 quite sort of Berber inflected. Right. Um, right, right. Um, uh, so, so that that was that was interesting. But like, you know, mm. the, the, I remember people sort of crowding around me, um, sort of, you know, <laughs> um, it, was, it was, yeah, and so, and so I was sort of, quick, you know, caught, you know, caught in this sort of bind, that, you know, being the journalist, but then I sort of have this sort of slippery. Um, sort of connection, and I'm right. black, but I'm I'm, right. I'm then from the west, and but then I'm Muslim. So it, it, it was. It was I, I'm I'm still trying to work that all out, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean it's it it, yeah. it, it that sort of thing is itself worthy of a dissertation, to be honest. So you know, it's it's fascinating. It's and and it's it's very sort of it's challenging. It's poignant. It's it's deeply meaningful yeah. in in so many respects as well. Yeah. Um, because yeah. you're also you know you're someone who's converted to Islam. And yeah. this is one of those areas uh, in the Islamic tradition, which, uh, you know, in a sense has been a, an object of um, Western attack or European attack absolutely. for several yeah, absolutely. hundred years. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's... it's yeah, it's, and, 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 you know, and, you know, it's interesting in that, you know, when, when I came to Islam, and so, I, I, I mean, I can tell you, I was 15 at the time when I, when I became Muslim. Right. Um, so, so, so it was, I mean, I'm, so it's, it's 20 years this year, actually, that I, that I became Muslim. <laughs> Um, so I, I give, give my age away there, um, <laughs> but, <laughs> but um, you know, an influence was you know you know was was Malcolm X, right? And mm. and you know, a big part of Malcolm X's message was sort of, as we spoke about this legacy of slavery and trying to overcome it and trying to, right, right. Um, you know, you know, you know, move us beyond it. Um, and then you know, there I am in you know in a you know in, in a majority Muslim country. Um, you know, with slavery and and right. you know all of these sort of yeah. things. Twenty years later, and then you right. know how you know how 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 do you deal with that? How do you think about that? And yeah. I think and I think and and you know and you know as as you as you you know get to learn more, you learn about you know the, the you know the slavery among you know some you know among some of the Black African groups as well um, right, in that right, part of the right, world right. as well. It's not right, it's not it's not necessarily um, Africans being enslaved by by Arabs and so on and so forth. You know, it's yeah. it's a lot more complex. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so, and so, you know, thinking through that um, is also really interesting. But I, I think, I think what it does is that it, it, it just, it just helps you to, um, to number one, not not to romanticize the past, which is also, which is, which is, which is very, which is very helpful. Um, right, right. But it, but it also just forces you to be, to be a lot more sort of nuanced, um, yeah. in, 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 in sort of how you think about, think about these things, and 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 to and, and to realize that they're not always just just completely black and white. Um, Absolutely. As well, even, even you know, even though you are dealing with with the horrors and the evils yeah, um, yeah. of you know you know of slavery, um, you know there, there, there are kind of there are kind of many sides to this. Um, and, yeah, and, and yeah, yeah, and and, and this is a, this is a challenge to be honest, because like you know, there's uh, <clears throat> something Jonathan Brown says that you know, you you can't very often you know you there's there's profound discomfort in our culture to think about this in nuanced terms right i mean it's like no yeah. this is black and white and we, this is wrong etc yeah. but um you know to bring it back to kwame Torre for a moment i mean you know his engagement with the question of revolution sometimes created these really awkward choices that you talk about right. uh, in terms of support supporting this um you know revolutionary leader who who engages in torture and mass killings effectively right Sure, um, sure. Because if he's thinking, oh, there's a, there's something bigger at play, and you know, it's something which uh, I I'm uh, hopefully sort of publishing a book in a a month or so, um, okay. which talks about the way in which uh, ulama have been kind of uh, complicit in certain ulama who you know I I don't have a great deal of respect for <laughs> any any longer, but yeah. you know these these are official figures in states um, working uh, alongside exactly. states, and they very often become complicit in terrible behaviours. Um, that uh, you know caused the massacring of of people, for example, at, at Rabah Square. Uh, its anniversary sure. is the fourteenth of August. Is actually the date on which my book will be released, inshallah. Okay, inshallah. And um, you know, it's it's something which makes me realize, just um, on a personal level, sometimes that look, you know, the world is a bit of a dystopic place. And yeah. theologically, I am reassured by my own sort of like theological um, perspectives on these sorts of things because uh, you know I believe in a just God and so on, but I also actually believe that my perception of justice uh, is not, you know, 
I don't, I, I cannot arrogate to myself uh, the ability to read God's mind on what justice exactly sure. means in reality. Sure. Right? We have these theoretical ideals and all of these sorts of things. And I think it's our duty actually to, you know, to try and uphold those theoretical ideals in our practice. That's yeah, part of absolutely. what we're supposed to do. But yeah. the world is a messy place, right? And um, it's really, I mean, it's so messy. Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah and, and I think, I, I, alhamdulillah, I mean, I think, I think that yeah. that's really what I've learned while being in West Africa. <laughs> <laughs> how, how 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 complicated and 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 really messy um things things actually are um, yet if if i can add i mean it's messy yeah. but there are also areas where within that sort of broad um arena of messiness some mm. things are very clearly more evil than others and absolutely. It's, absolutely it's about you know having a certain degree of moral nuance but also having with that moral nuance moral clarity when yeah, yeah. things are clear cut that you know yeah. to to Absolutely. Uphold, yeah what's right i think i think i think i think one of the things that I, that I really struggled with was that um for example the discourse around slavery um mm -hmm. around racism is at a certain level in you know in the uk or or in the english speaking world yeah. um but it's not like that everywhere yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. it's it's it's, yeah. it's it's not like that everywhere so so sort of um the, you know the, the the sort of moral certainty is um, that, that that I have, um, you know, and, and that I'm adamant about, and that, that, that are foundational to how I see the world, um, mm -hmm. just don't matter to the same extent to someone who looks exactly like me um, in in you know in you know in another part of the world, um, and and that and that's um, and 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 that 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 was all that was that was something that that was sometimes difficult um, right. to sort of take. Right. Well, one of the interesting things that's about interesting. Um, about about Mauritania. Yeah. A lot, a lot of the, um, a lot of the activists I spoke to were actually people who lived in the US. So these, so these, so so so, so, so these were Black Mauritanians right, um, right. who would who would move to the US, right. um, and 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 had effectively, yeah, of course, of course, you know, they speak English, so it's easy for me to right. talk to them and all that sort of stuff. But but they but they had found a language to talk about their struggle, um, mm. in a way. Um, mm. And 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 you know had sort of adopted some of the African American sort of you know sort of terminologies and ways of looking at you know so you know sort of looking at things, um, which you know which I which I found really interesting. And that that's absolutely not to say that there aren't um, people in Mauritania who are completely um, you know devoted, and 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 there are many people who are devoted to you know to the struggle um, you know against slavery you know you know in Mauritania. I can you know I can read off names, um, but I, I just I I just I just found that interesting that um, that. You know, in the the, the people that the, the, we're, we're all in different pages in, in various ways, and we have different priorities right. as well. Right. We have different right. priorities as well. Like you know, I, I I don't I don't I don't have um the you know the material. I'm not in the same material circumstances as as you know yeah, as yeah. as a lot of people that I would have encountered. Yeah, um, yeah of course. You know, of course. you know, yeah. educationally, etc., yeah. etc. Yeah. Et yeah. Um, so you know, there you know there are a lot of things that I, that I realize about this. The, you know, Bertolt Brecht, um, the, I think he's an Austrian playwright or possibly a German yeah. playwright from the last century, said, you know, food yeah. first, then ethics. Right, um, right, right. <laughs> but but not just that. I mean, I, I also think that you know, um, I I don't know if it's called moral contextualism or something like that. Mm. But you know, morality can have you know different sorts of um, context. You know, uh, this comes back to the uh, sort of um, I forget the exact phrase that's used, but الحكم يتغير أو الفتوى يتغير بتغير الزمان والمكان. The nature of a fatwa changes with the change of time and place. Yeah. Um, and fatwas are ultimately moral judgments, right? They're moral mm -hmm. um, sort of like um, imperatives or you know perhaps prohibitions of some kind, etc. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that um, to a certain extent. I, you know, it, it kind of reinstates our, our own humanity that we recognize uh, ultimately our own perceptions of what are really urgent moral questions may, mm. um, you know, radically differ to other people. But I, I personally believe that, you know, God requires us to act on our moral sort of like intuitions. Um, you know, uh, what we believe to be right, we need to uphold. What we believe to be wrong, we need to sure. sort of call to people Absolutely. to stop. And, but at the same time, uh, you know, it's very difficult to uh, absolutely adjudicate a lot of these questions. And so you will have these disagreements between different people. And there's a line in the Quran, which I think of in this sort of context, you know, um, You know, 
on on the day of judgment he will then inform you about all the things that you disagreed about right and um which which is not to say that um you know i i don't think that that's relativist by any stretch of the imagination i think there yeah. are certain things which which are uh, are right and wrong um but uh you know inshallah um what i was just thinking one of the perhaps this is a, a point to sort of like um uh, you know for me to conclude on and, and i'd like to hear your thoughts on these sorts of things sure. as well but you know for some people it's like the moral imperative is to put an end to slavery yeah and for other people it's like the moral imperative is for people to believe in one god mm. right yeah and that's my that's the ultimate moral imperative and even if people are enslaved that is secondary to the consideration that they are you know that they believe in uh, one god and um you know that's you know uh, are those in conflict with one another? Well, if you say that this yeah. is the ultimate moral imperative, then you're basically saying in a hierarchy, this is higher up than the other one. Sure, sure, sure. It's not to say that that's not important. Yeah. Yeah, it's, no, it's no, I, think, I, think, yeah. I, I think it's a good question. I, I, it, it, it kind of it kind of takes me a bit back to um to to to, to Zach Zaki in 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 sort of Nigeria, right? right. Because he he would he would sort of argue that um to truly believe in God, um. What one one has to overcome these injustices, right? You know, right. so it's so, not it's not so, enough to just believe in one God. It's, right? it's, it's, it's not, yeah. yeah, exactly. But believe yeah. believing is is not something kind of theoretical. It's it's it it, 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 it you know it, it requires some transforms action. Uh, yeah, it, yeah, exactly. It, 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 it requires action as well. And I think yeah. in 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 some ways, I think I think that question is 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 really a burning question right now. Actually, right, right. <laughs> within you know among you know among Muslims actually. Right, um, right. some Absolutely. some you know you know some some who would sort of say that you know belief can sort of um come from um you know in you know the comforts of one's one's own living room <laughs> others right. others other others who would say that you know true belief entails um that one goes out and changes right. um the world right. as it is right. 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 um i i i mean i i, I kind of know where i stand on that on, on that question and right. And right i think and i think and i think that for and i think that fundamentally for for the sort of you know, you know, the, you know, the sort of, the, you know, the black, um, the the tradition of Islam, you could say, or the, the Malcolm X tradition, or however you want to call it, um, yeah. of Islam in, you know, in the sort of Americas. Um, I think, I think that's really been fundamental. Um, the, 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 the act, 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 action is, 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 is kind of a part of belief, really. Right. Um, right, right. And, 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 and that, that's really been fundamental um, yeah. because I think that, there has never been freedom for um, black people in that part of the world through just sitting down and believing something. It's always right. had to come right. through through action. That the, right. and it's not just freedom. It's just it's just being survival, being, dig- being yeah, human, survival, yeah. be, be, being being treated being, as a being human a dignified. Being. Right, exactly. Right. Um, so, so yeah, people have different answers um, um, to that to that question. But like, but it, but it, but, it, but it's definitely it's definitely a good one. So it's definitely a good curveball. <laughs> it, it's it's a big one. It's a big one. I mean, like, um, yeah, um, and. You know, I don't necessarily have the answer to it, but I, I think in the sense yeah. of, um, you know, I'm, I'm just posing it as something that uh, we need to reflect on. Um, one of the, you know, uh, groups that I've studied in passing, um, I don't study them too much because my, my wife's Moroccan and I don't want to get in trouble with Moroccan authorities, so to speak, but um, a movement, al Adl wal Ihsan, I forget the exact um, translation that they use in into English or French in that case. But uh, m- uh, you know the movement of justice and excellence, justice I guess, some, except, right, yeah, something yeah. along those lines. And this was headed by someone uh, who passed away, I think, in 2013. His name was um, Sheikh um, Abdus Salam Yassin, quite yeah. a sort of noted figure in. Um, oh, I just realised my my battery's dying, so <laughs> forgive me if uh, I I might need to go and pick up my charger. But. Okay. Uh, and and we we could wrap up in sort of five ten minutes inshallah. Okay, no, no if, problem. If it's okay with yourself, but no, that's um, totally fine. A, a bit of, yeah, a bit a bit of neglect on my part. So Abdul Salam Yassin, he passed away in twenty thirteen. He, he was basically um, a philosopher, um, originally a humanist kind of figure, and then he kind of comes to Islam, uh, rediscovers his roots in a sense in Morocco in when he was in his forties, I think, and. Uh, he becomes a Sufi as well, so he uh, sort of adopts the Budshishi Tariqa, which uh, is quite sort of close to the government right now, as far as I understand. But he, notably, 
uh, adopts this kind of social justice um, paradigm where for him it's like uh, he creates effectively al-adl wal ihsan uh, functions something like a modern tariqah right. uh, where he's inspired by people like Hassan al-Banna for example and uh, you know he has certain affinities with the Muslim Brotherhood movement although he's very critical or he was very critical of the Muslim Brotherhood movement in Morocco because they were co-opted by the state and so on right. um but he was quite radical. He spent time in prison because he spoke out against the um, uh, the monarchy. And, uh, uh, you know, for him, uh, the one Sufism meant that one was engaged in public action. It meant yeah, that you yeah, were engaged yeah. in social justice um, activism. Yeah. And in a sense, you know, that's, uh, you could extend saying, if you're a Muslim who has a strong commitment to your deen, then that should translate into social justice action. There was Absolutely. an old debate uh, in theology about um, whether you needed actions in addition to belief. But those right. actions are usually understood to be, you know, you have to be engaged in praying and fasting and so on. Uh, yeah. If you didn't do that stuff, were you still considered a believer? But this yeah. is kind of, um, in a sense, a 21st century version of this debate, I guess. Sure, sure, um, sure, sure, sure. Which is that, you know, do you need to be a social justice um, activist in order for yeah. your Islam to be complete? And yeah, yeah. Uh, my, my personal thoughts are that, you know, if you have the capacity to engage in that, then mm. it is doubtless a deficiency for you not to engage in that kind of social justice activism, in addition sure. to your personal religious obligations. Absolutely. Um, yeah, but, yeah, uh, yeah. 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 No, no. I mean, I, I mean, you know, I mean, in the context of, um, you know, many, many sort of the, you know, anti-colonial or, you know, leaders, you know, whether so Sufi, you know, you think of Imam Imam Shamil, you think of, right, right. Um, Usman Danfodio, um, yes, in Nigeria, yes. um, you know, you know, you think about the, you know, the, you know, the, the Mahdi Libyan. movement. It, the Libyan, um, this, uh, the, 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 the Sanusi, yeah. Um, um, the Sanusi uh, you think yeah. about the uh, the Mahdi yeah. movement in um in, in Sudan, Sudan yeah, yeah. um even in even even in Senegal as well, um right. uh, Umar uh, 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 Umar Tol. So um, okay. so, yeah, is, there, I think, I think, is there secondary literature on that at all? The uh, Senegalese version, because I've not that's uh, the first I've heard of it. There unfortunately. Is, yeah, there is actually a book coming out pretty soon about him. <laughs> oh, <laughs> um, fantastic. I, I can, in um in English, I, a okay, friend of mine actually is, is um is just 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 putting it together, um okay. will be O U P. So um I can I can direct you. Um, yeah, please do. It, I mean, for the inter in the interest of potential listeners, what's the name of your yeah, friend? Yeah, I mean, I mean, uh, yeah. So um, Hadjou Motal is is an interesting figure because okay. he he's the person who brings, um, he really brings a a, 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 a Tijani um Tarika into into Senegal and, and Tijani right. Tarika. Um, is one of the, is one of the largest in Senegal and and throughout yeah, West Africa, and Africa more um, yeah. and, and and Africa more generally, right? Yeah. Um, and um, he, yeah, he he creates a sort of you know a, a quite sizable empire for himself um, mm -hmm. by sort of um, you know going against other um, you know other African tribes, but he also he also faces faces off against the French as well. Um, and he 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 lives. I mean, he he lives a really sort of full life in that. You know, he does his Hajj and he 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 hangs out with the sort of this, you know, the, I think the Syrian Sultan of the day. He marries a daughter, the granddaughter of Osman Danfodio, right. um, and then he he, he creates this um, short-lived empire that stretches, I think, from Senegal right into the heart of Mali, um, right. where he dies or disappears or what well, you know or something like right, that. Right. It's quite he's quite he's, he's quite he's quite he's quite he's quite quite the um, quite the character, but um, but also quite quite ferocious as well. Um, uh, and, oh, and, and actually, in what um, sense? Uh, well, I mean, I mean, you know, he's, you know, he, you know, he, he really, he really does, um, he, you know, he, he, you know, he, I mean, he wages jihad for, you know, for a very long period, um, and 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 in fact, one of one of the, the big things in Senegal recently was about his sword, um, because France, France basically had had ownership of his sword, oh, um, and 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 so you know, the, you know, the whole debate about restitution of artifacts and stuff like that, right, right, right. Um, that his his sword has been, it's actually in in in, in Dakar right now in, in Senegal, it's been they oh. they borrowed it for for a period of time. They borrow um, so he's he, 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 yeah yeah exactly exactly um it's been lent to them um which is which is ridiculous you know just to say um yeah. but, he, but, he, but he's but he's seen as a as, as a big figure um right. um you know so sort of amongst senegalese you know you know the, you know there are debates as well um about um you know the sort of ethics of of creating these empire or you know empire building that part of the world and you know um you know 
fighting in, against non-Muslims. You know, the, you know, there's right. you know, there, 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 all these debates that are also taking place as well. Yeah. I mean, I um in in Senegal, there's debates taking place. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Right exactly, right. exactly, exactly, yeah. exactly, exactly. Um, I, yeah, I mean, I if you have time, I'd be interested to sort of reflect on some of these debates as well. But yeah, well, yeah, it yeah. might it I'm, might open a can of worms. So I don't I don't want to sort of push you in that direction. <laughs> it, might, it, might, it, might, it, might, it might be a little bit beyond me. That's um, fine. In, That's in terms fine. Of, no problem. You know, so in, ter you know, in terms of my knowledge, I look forward to reading your friend's book in Shaila. What's your friend's yeah, name? Sorry, um, his name is I. I so you know, I I know him as as as, as Uncle Uncle Samba. So you have to. <laughs> okay, no, that's one. fine. That's fine. So I'll I'll get the actual name uh, from you later on, and I'll perhaps post it in the in the comments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's um yeah no he's yeah he's he's just one of the finishing touches. His, his name is actually um um Samba uh, Samba Diop. Um, okay, thank you. Yeah, he was he was he was at Harvard for for, for around a decade actually. Um, oh, in, in, um in front of French literature. Um, he's right, now right. I think he's now based in based in Norway. Um, I, I look but, forward but to he's, it. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah, perhaps yeah. I could even interview him if you, if you put in a good word for me, so to speak. For... Yeah, no, no, no. I, I can definitely put you in touch and and, and sure. sort of say that. I think I think you'll be. Sure. I, I mean, he he'll be someone that can also bring in that that, that sort of French African or right. West African francophone view into you know into things and and, and kind of right. put it together right. with sort of some right. of the stuff I'm talking about. Um, right. it's, it's it's always really valuable to have to have that perspective. Um, is he, he you know I, is I, he west I, indian so to speak uh, in, no no so he's he's, he's he's um he's um he, he, he's he's senegalese um but, see, he, but he works see. across francophone and and anglophone as well okay. um okay. and and, okay. and i think i i, I think it's, it's it's really enriching um to have to have right. that francophone perspective as well um as well as anglophone right. perspective right. When, when discussing sort of islam west africa and stuff yeah, yeah. yeah. sorry i cut you off <laughs> no, 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 you... no 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 it's all good yeah Okay, well, I mean, um, I, I was basically, we, we were talking about the sort of uh, the ethics. And as you say, it's a bit complicated with uh, the chaps whose name I've forgotten, actually, the, uh, the yeah. imam. Hadru yeah, yeah. Uh, so, um, but inshallah, uh, I, you know, uh, this has been very sort of eye opening for me, including reading your book, because uh, this is an area where I am <laughs> quite out of my depth, to be honest. And, uh, you know, I think uh, that's also uh, reflective probably of the um, tendencies of Islamic studies uh, as it currently uh, exists in the academy. Uh, and, yeah. of course, Islamic studies beyond the academy and in, in the theological sphere, in the sort of like seminarial sphere, uh, for want of a better sure. expression. So, inshallah, you know, this is m me making a, a small effort to try and broaden my own horizons. And it's really yeah, uh, yeah, been yeah. rewarding I mean, to have this conversation with you, to be honest. Yeah, no, no, I totally agree, and we, 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 I mean, we could have, and that, that's that, that's another topic as well. Islamic, so you know, I, I, I studied, I, I studied Islamic studies in, in a Western university, and right, and yeah, of the course, sort of, Exeter, yeah. But, but 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 as you sort of say, the like, you know, sort of, you know, West Africa is just not really part of, <laughs> just not part of the discourse at all. I mean, it's just completely um, excised um, from it, um, right, which is right. which, which is quite remarkable. Um, I mean, but, you know, from yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, I hope, uh, even though you're going into um, the academy as a doctoral student in, I think, a, comp a comparative literature department, potentially. Yeah, right? yeah, literature, it'll be literature, yeah. Literature in, department, more yeah. in literature. Uh, yeah. But I hope you'll still sort of like um, continue that attachment to Islamic studies on some level, at least, yeah, uh, that you I have think, for your undergraduate think... years. So that you yeah, can influence I, no, our field would, as well. <laughs> I'd, 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 I'd really love to. You know, I, I'm just yeah. I'm just worried about the intensity of these of these of these US PhDs. That's that's the only thing that gets me a bit worried. <laughs> uh, inshallah, I mean, stay in touch. Um, you know, stick around after um, we conclude. Inshallah, maybe we can have a bit of a chat. But yeah, inshallah, yeah. I think I think you've, you've been you working. You've the tell the tell. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, I personally think that for someone like yourself working in the sort of uh, the realm of journalism where you have to produce at such a, a rapid rate and so frequently uh, it should be a walk in the park to be honest but but we'll inshallah may Allah grant you tawfiq it's really yeah, been a pleasure thank, Allah. You. Um, thank you thank you so much I really as enjoyed always and uh, and I, I look forward to future opportunities uh, you know while you're doing your research inshallah and hopefully you'll continue to do publishing as well um, sure. but please uh, keep uh us Brits in your dua while you're out in the new world. You know, going. <laughs> it's kind of homecoming for you as well, so to speak. Yeah, 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 yeah. Funny uh, enough. Yeah, and uh, yeah. inshallah, um, you know, we will uh, continue to be in touch with, and continue to benefit from your scholarship going forward and your journalism, you know, if that continues as well, inshallah. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. I really enjoyed the conversation.
it's been an absolute pleasure and we will be in touch and for um you know those of you watching uh from home so to speak um inshallah next week we'll have Omar and Shasi uh doing one of his book reviews so we look forward to seeing you then fi amanillah assalamu alaykum wa Thank you.